please, please watch this video. This isn't for you, it's for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done uh, consultations and worked with a lot of, of WordPress site owners and it's it um, is so sad when I see somebody who's put a ton of work into their project and then it's held back by just the technology that's things that are pretty easy to set up so we're gonna go through a list of some of the important easy things you can change in WordPress that can make a big difference some are more ninja things that you more advanced people would like and others are more basic that you just have to make sure is done just make a check mark make sure you've done it uh, as you go along so Let's get started. The first one is properly setting up permalinks from the very beginning. Huge. If you have to tweak this later, you're going to break um, all of the links to your website. Yeah, so the okay. permalink is whatever, yoursite.com slash, and then what is it going to say? Right. To uh, put them to site. Right. It could be the category the post is in, and then the post name, or a weird number, and then the post name, etc. We prefer just yoursite.com slash site title, the title. Right, exactly. Um, if you don't do this right off the bat and you change it later, it's going to change all your URLs mm -hmm. um, for every post on your website. So it will do destroy it right now. your SEO. And you just go to your, your website and you just go to settings and permalinks. And then you just select which one you want. It's very straightforward, but do it now before you write a whole bunch of content. Number two. Pick a theme that actually works for you. Now we have our own theme at incomeschool.com slash acabado that we are quite partial to. <laughs> but there are a lot of really great themes out there. And so we just wanna make sure you end up with the right theme for you and a couple parameters in doing that. This is probably the most common we, mistake we see yes. in WordPress is somebody who's picked a theme that just does not work for their application. They work really hard to customize it, tweak it, make it work for what Install they want to do. 20 plugins. And it causes all kinds of errors. We've seen sites just ruined uh, by doing this. So what I would recommend is pick a theme that has the functionality that you actually need. Mm -hmm. If you really do need to customize the heck out of your site, Go pick Divi, go choose Elementor as your page builder and so that you can actually do that. Don't pick Alcabado, no. our own theme. Don't pick it. If you really need to customize the crud out of it, it's the wrong theme for right. that. Um, however, if you really have, you want a fast, simple, clean design that is content first, then Pick a theme that doesn't have a bunch of things that are gonna drive you crazy and likely won't be set up correctly. This is my problem with X theme, right. is people are choosing it to be quick and easy and beautiful right, right. out of the gate, and it's not. It's right. a great theme, but it takes a ton of customization to get there. Right, even if you go through the effort and just like install the demo content and settings, that'll get you mm -hmm. like 80% of the way there. Yeah. Um, and then there's that 20% that you're like, how come I still don't have this slider? Oh well, if you want that slider, you have to go install the Revolution slider plugin, and mm -hmm. you have to. It's a mess. Man, I spent hours learning how to just do the slider on X Theme. Mm -hmm. um, when it's like, it seems like that should have just been like built in. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, and so the the point here is, if you're looking for something just like simple, that's just gonna look awesome and be super fast, then pick a theme that doesn't have a ton of crazy customization. Something that you can break and mess up. Mm -hmm. If you need the customization, then pick a theme that's designed for that. Number three, test your page speed. I think the reason that a lot of people don't pay attention to the page speed is because it feels really fast. Yeah. When you go to your own website and you're navigating it, it's fast, it feels great. Uh, and I see this all the time as we're looking through people's site is I go there and you see this big old banner image that's like <laughs> as it's loading that banner image. And I'm like, dude, your site is slow. Yeah. And they'll say like, no, it, I mean, watch, I click through it. And it's like, yeah, because you've been to the, to the site a it's whole cached. bunch of times, it's cached for you. It feels fast to you. It's not fast to a new, new visitor. We're, we're getting like a six, eight, 10 second page load time. So page speed insights, uh, Google has their own tool and Google is the one sending us the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to know how they are measuring this. So uh, go, go to page 
Just Google it, PageSpeed Insights. Just Google PageSpeed Insights. I can't remember it's what like the developers. URL is. developers.google.com. Just Google <laughs> PageSpeed Insights. They have ranked their uh, test number one for that search query. Oh, how somehow, funny. So. <laughs> um, but really, go and please check your website. If you're having problems, get rid of plugins. Keep going through until you get that right speed. If, if, you've, if you've deactivated plugins and it's still not fast, we need to start looking at the theme. We have a theme that can get you fast, but there are others as well who can get you a fast page uh, page speed time. So get a theme that speed will not impact your SEO. The next one is to clean up your sidebar. By default, WordPress is putting things like meta tags and recent posts and all sorts of other things in the sidebar. Um, I don't know why they're still doing all that. Uh, the fact of the matter is like, first of all, most people aren't even looking at that and using that. It just like detracts just from the rest of your content. The next thing is like, when you get to a point where you want to show some ads, um, having less stuff in your sidebar actually dramatically increases the amount you can earn from ads. Um, because uh, think about this, if you put a sticky ad in the sidebar and it appears near the top and as people scroll down, it just stays with them the whole time because you don't have a bunch of other stuff in the sidebar, you can show ads much more. By ha you have less ads on the page, but that are showing more. And so you can be less invasive with ads but um, make a lot more money on your website. Plus, it's just outdated clutter that serves no purpose. I'm gonna slip in a little tip here that's <laughs> not in our list of 10. But understand how users are using your website. Yes. So you can actually get uh, some heat map software uh, that, to run on your website to see where people are looking and moving their mouse and stuff. I find a maybe more accurate or effective way of just understanding how people are using your site is just for a day, Go through your website and put Pretty Link. So Pretty Link is a plugin you can use to, uh, and it will track the clicks to whatever link it is. So if they're going, you know, in your menu, you have a link to different categories. Just make a custom Pretty Link to point to that category page. Everything in your sidebar, all your main navigation and stuff, um, and just switch it to a Pretty Link for a couple days yeah. and get some data back. You will be shocked things that you think people are using on your website that they're just not. You'll yeah. be shocked how few users actually click the navigation on your website or click that little thing that you've chucked into the <laughs> sidebar. Do it for a couple days and you will have your eyes wide open as to how people are really using the yeah. site. The next one is using images to your benefit. Now, um, the th what we're going to talk about here doesn't really apply to everyone, mm -hmm. okay? Um, yes, using images in every blog post is good it, from an SEO standpoint and from a user experience standpoint, using relevant images adds to the value. But another way that people are using images is um, to actually rank the image, mm -hmm. right, in Google image search. Um, this only makes sense if you have an image that uh, is maybe uh, unique that it may, especially like product images, where mm -hmm. it's an image of your specific product. Um, you were talking about this just the other day. You did. You were looking for a product where it's like an Eames chair. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I a was looking chair. for an Eames chair, but there are a lot of knockoffs right. of it. And so I searched Eames chair, and I went to Google Images because I didn't want to click through a whole bunch of e-commerce websites just to just see to what their one. chair looked like. Yeah. I went to Images to see all the different Eames chairs knockoffs. And then when I found one, then I went to the website. Exactly. So you clicked on the image and then ended up on the website. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to try to do that, then it makes sense on your image to you know use alt tags and stuff just to make it really clear to Google what this image is. Mm -hmm. um, for the rest of us, uh, yeah. If you're people doing are e looking at e-commerce or you took the picture yourself, yes. Take the time to enter the meta tags, uh -huh. the, your alt tags for the images, because that can actually drive some traffic to your website. If it's just a stock photo that ten other websites have too, <laughs> I don't know what the what the real purpose and, is. And 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 we just don't. We just don't take the time to even add in alt text and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't really add any value. Okay, optimize for mobile. Now, duh, you should have a theme that is that will auto resize for mobile. Obviously, right? But what about a theme that's actually mobile first? Because most of your users are probably on mobile. And I want to include kind of tablet in there. Often you'll see, you know, 8 to 10% of traffic coming from tablets, depending on your site topic. Um, a lot of themes will look great on the desktop. 
okay-ish on mobile and terrible on, on a nobody's tablet. looking at it. Right. right, so check on all three formats and different screen sizes. But on the mobile specifically, what we often see in themes is they want to include everything from desktop, and so it just gets so much crud in the top that you have to scroll down fully before you even get to content. Yeah. And so look at your theme on your phone right now and see how far the content is down from the top and see what changes you can make to the design to get that content up above the fold. That was like a huge factor when we were designing our own theme. Mm -hmm. It was how can we get the content as close to the top as possible yep. while still having the branding, the logo, the menu and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Okay, the next one is improving old content. There's a lot kind of questions of the, about this. Yeah, the age-old debate like, do I just write a new post or do I improve an old blog post? Um, and honestly, it really does vary from mm -hmm. what the post is. So, okay, so if I have a post that is doing really well in SEO, it ranks very well, gets me a lot of traffic, but it does need updates. Um, let's say it was like a best products. Tread for, lightly, my friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> best products for 2017, 2018, whatever. And you're like, oh, I want to change that to 2019. Okay, first of all, in the URL, the permalink, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the year out of the permalink. I, I shouldn't, have, don't put it in there. Originally, in the first place. don't change Originally, it once it's already there. Right, once it's already there, don't change it. But that way, if I just change those four letters or even one letter, right, it goes from 2018 to 2019 in the headline. Like it's not gonna really trigger um, Google to necessarily re-index the whole page. Um, if I go in there and I just make slight tweaks, very slight, it, Google's not gonna necessarily re-index the whole page. And so I can maintain my ranking. But what we often see is somebody says, this is an important page. I need this to be the best as possible so it stays up. So they go in and they just overhaul the post and it's better but it triggers a, a re-index. And sometimes we've seen our best posts just fall off a cliff yeah. because it was re-indexed. They were like, whoa, this is not the resource that we had that we had tested before. Uh -huh. And so- You have to retest it, start yeah, all over. To can fall off the, a cliff for months. Yeah. So tread lightly. If it's ranking really well, you know, change two or three sentences and leave it for a month and yep. then tweak a little bit more. On the other end of the spectrum is there's a topic that's really good for your website and you just feel like you didn't do it justice in the beginning. It's not ranking well. Is it better to fix up the old post or write a new one? Honestly, I'm kind of indifferent as to which. I, I generally lean toward if the post is dead and you've given it a full year and it's just dead, right. I would lean toward creating a brand new post on a brand new page. Sure, if you want to copy and paste the old content and then totally rehaul it, overhaul it, and then redirect the old one to the new one. So any any existing links to the old one or whatever mm -hmm. just will point people to the new resource. Yeah, I I don't know how much of a difference it really makes if you had really just overhauled the old one. Just I've had too many experiences where I did just overhaul one that was dead and it just never Didn't popped really. the new version either, and I just felt like it really should have. And so that's that's my process. Now, something you said there brings up sort of a third group, which are the people who made a resource, they don't feel like it's as good as it should be, and so a month later they overhaul it, Leave and then it a month alone. later they overhaul it again. You are not giving Google time to adequately test this. If it's not 100% perfect, it's okay. Just let it Write be. the post and leave it alone yep. for a year and then you can decide how it performed. All right. The next one is a backup. Oh, <laughs> you got a man. I have lost entire websites yep. before. In fact, we're we at a point now where we there's a redundant backup and that's because our host is doing a backup. And, and that's not good enough. No, we used to just kind of rely on that, but yeah, something can happen with the host and you can lose it. Mm -hmm. And so um, we will use a separate tool that does a backup. And it's now called Manage WP. And it does a lot of things. Yeah, it but. costs a buck a month. And they'll <laughs> the do backup, a, a yeah. full backup. A lot of plugins, if you just get a backup plugin, they're not backing up everything. Right. They may back up text, but not images, etc. We want yeah. somebody that's going to back up everything. And so I just use it. It's a dollar a month. Manage yeah. WP. It's owned by GoDaddy now. Awesome tool. And it's it's a thorough enough backup that I can just take the backup and like install it on a new host. Yeah, if our host ever went down for an extended time, and we've seen hosts that just yep. got attacked or whatever and they were down for a week. Yeah. Like if that happened, it would really hurt us. And yeah. so we just take our 
separate third-party backup Chuck it on a new host, point the domain over there. Done. Yep. No. You, yeah. Yeah. You'll have a day of downtime because it just takes that long for the yep. domain DNS to point. Anyway, to propagate fully. Know your formatting features. A lot of times when we see people who have kind of crufted up their website with a ton of plugins or because they're really trying to do something unique in the formatting, kind of going above and beyond. Um, and know Gutenberg really, really yeah. well. That, the so features Gutenberg, in Gutenberg are awesome. Gutenberg is WordPress's just built-in. It's, I mean, it's fairly new, but it's their built-in um, page and post builder. It has a lot of cool yeah, features. Yeah, your tables, your everything. I, it's it's, it's just there now. In. Yeah. Um, so really get to know those tools in the editor right built in there rather than resorting to page builders, which will slow things down and make you not as future-proof. Yep, absolutely. And the last one is consider turning off comments. Oh, please um, do. <laughs> there are some blog topics or maybe even some specific posts where you um, you really do want that interaction. The feedback is helpful. Um, and, and if that's your case, then fine. But maybe consider just turning on comments for those specific posts. Now, the easy way to turn off comments from here on out on your website is just go to your site and go to settings and go to discussion. And there's a checkbox near the top. It's like the third one down as of right now at least, that if you uncheck the box to allow comments on new posts, it just won't even have that option enabled. Um, if you want to remove the option for people to add comments on all of your past posts, you have two options. One is to go through post by post. And the way to do that is you go to posts and you just click quick edit on each one. And there's just a little checkbox, allow comments. And you just uncheck it. Um, if you wanted to specifically enable comments on one post or another, you can do the same. If posts are, if comments are disabled, you can go to the quick edit and just check the box and it will override the general setting. Um, the other option that's just awesome is, I mean, if you need this, is to go get a plugin. There's a disable comments plugin mm -hmm. that will allow you to enable or disable comments globally by, um, by category, and so you have a little bit more flexibility and it will like retroactively go back and disable comments on posts you've already written. So the reason we don't like play, like comments are, one, you just stopping the spam is so hard. Yeah. You'll get a plugin that'll work great for a few months and then all of a sudden you'll have a hundred spam comments in a day somebody got through. Yep. Um, it also is very time consuming uh, for you to go through and Commenters are negative and they will drag yeah. you down. Like it's rare that somebody is like legitimately just wants to thank you if it's right. not a spam comment. Um, <laughs> and so it, anyway, those are the reasons that generally on our sites, we just don't have comments. You know, on YouTube and stuff, we want comments. Uh, but on, on blogs where there's just so much spam, I'd prefer just to not deal with it. Could it technically impact SEO? Yeah, I mean, it is adding some content. It is user generated and usually low quality. But if you're getting any <laughs> spam stuff going through, it's gonna hurt your yeah. SEO to have those spam links on there. So whenever somebody says, yeah, but it hurts your SEO, it's like maybe it's probably gonna help to keep the spam out though. If you are going to have comments on your post, I would suggest having a pretty thorough blacklist of words. Mm -hmm. um, those are gonna help cut out a lot of spam comments. But even so, you're gonna get a fair amount of spam where the, the words are just gonna say, hey, nice post, thanks. Uh -huh. But there's a link embedded. Right. You know, like that's what they're doing. And like most people that write, hey, nice post, they don't mean it. It's if, just spam. And if it's you are going to have comments in your blacklisting, WordPress has this feature to blacklist certain words yeah. in there. My favorite word to, to blacklist is informations. Yes. <laughs> I, a native English speaker won't say informations. Like, but I have just noticed in so many spam comments, it says, thank you for the informations. It's just, I've seen that hundreds yeah. and hundreds of times, and so I always add that one in there. If they write information, <laughs> this is it's probably spam. not a legitimate comment. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us in this video. Uh, we have an SEO newsletter for you where when there are algorithm updates, important things that you need to know about SEO, some tips we wanna share, yep. you can go and grab it. The just URL. Just go to incomeschool.com slash SEO. Tricky.